So this collection of stories, and many like it, because a lot of people like to share these kinds of stories, are called Aesop's Fables. And this collection of Aesop's Fables was written and illustrated by one of my favorite authors and illustrators, Jerry Pinkney. Would you like to see Jerry? Yeah. yeah. That's Jerry. Oh. He's got a really nice website, you guys. There's Jerry. Jerry Pinkney wrote and illustrated this book. He's an award winner. Because look at these illustrations. Can you see that cross? from where you're sitting. I'm going to open up the front and the back cover across the spine. I'm going to be really careful so that you can see the whole illustration. So these are a lot of the animal characters that are in Aesop's Fables. And then I'll show you a page. These are all, remember how I said that uh, Aesop's Fables are short little stories that teach us a moral lesson about being our best self? Look how short they are. Each one is only one page long. So I chose three, and not all of the fables are about foxes, but the three that I'm going to share with you today are about fox characters. And a, and a lot of Aesop's fables, the fox characters are really smart, really crafty, sometimes a little sneaky. What? Oh. Uh, and uh, sometimes they are a little tricky and like tricking some of the other animal characters. So the first story I'm going to share with you is called The Fox and the Crow. Do you know what a crow is? Yeah, it's a black bird. Yeah, it's the black bird. You saw a bunch circling today? He's here? Oh, interesting. Maybe they were trying to trick Fox. So here is the first story of the fox and the crow from Aesop's Fables. One morning, a fox was trotting through the woods in search of a tasty morsel to eat. Looking up, she spied a crow perched in a tree overhead with a large piece of cheese held tight in her beak. That cheese would be just the thing for my breakfast thought the fox. And sitting down beneath the tree, she gazed up at the crow, as if hypnotized by her beauty. Loveliest of creatures, she called loudly. Your feathers shine like silk. Your wings are black as night. How bright your eyes glow. Oh, it's such a pity I've heard that you can't sing. If only you could sing just one note, you'd be the most perfect creature alive. The crow, hearing all this flattery, all of these nice things about her, quickly grew vain. <gasps> Why, the fox is right. My feathers are beautiful. My eyes do glow, she thought. Not sing? Why, surely I can sing. And better than any common bird in the forest. And she opened up her mouth to let out a loud caw, caw. And what do you think happened? Down fell the cheese. You're right. And the fox snapped it up in two bites. Thank you for my breakfast, friend, she called. I see you have a voice indeed, but where is your brain? Never trust flatterers. Maybe somebody who's always trying to tell you how perfect you are and how glittery your eyes are and how shiny your feathers are might be trying to trick you. Should we read another one? Yeah! Oh, this one is funny. It's called The Fox and the Pheasants. You guys look like you're already ready for a funny story. You guys, remember our audience oath. We have to sit quietly in order to hear the stories. Okay. Yeah, right here in the story is a fox. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. You guys get yourselves together, okay? It's right here in front of me. Fox. <clears throat> Several pheasants, little round brown birds, were perched on a tree limb when they saw a fox down below. Keep your eye on him, one of them whispered to the rest. We're safe up here, but you know how cunning foxes can be. The pheasants huddled together and peered down at the fox, who began to prance about as though he had gone suddenly mad. He leaped and jumped. He pawed the air. He shook his tail as though a spark had landed on it. The pheasants began to laugh at the fox's antics. At last, the fox began to twirl in a circle. Faster and faster he went until the bemused pheasants grew dizzy watching him. Their heads spinning, they lost their balance and fell to the ground. Oh, no. Quick as a thought, the fox snapped up two or three birds. Thank you for watching, he said with a little bow. <laughs> So who got the snack in that story? The fox, the fox again! The fox, the fox no, it's in front of me. It's right, no. it's right here in the back. Yeah. Oh, do you know what the moral of the story is for this one? No, it's right, right here. It says, well, I'm going to tell you the moral. Are you ready? Yeah, it's in front of me, Lucy. It says, danger often comes when we feel safe. I'm so glad we're all so safe right here. All right, get your body ready for the story. It's called The Fox and the Goat. One hot day, a fox happened upon a deep well. Longing for a drink, he leaned too far over the edge and tumbled in head first. Do you know what a well is? It's where you get water, right? It's a really deep hole that's dug so deep it gets all the way down to the water in the earth. And you can drink it when you pull it up in a bucket. But if you go all the way down in, you'd be very, very deep down. So the fox was looking too deep down and tumbled in. Oh, a long way Head first. Head first. Head, that was really good listening. That's exactly what it says. Tumbled in head first. Seeing no way out, the fox sat mournfully at the bottom of the well. Aww. Can you guys do that with me? Aww. Poor fox. Soon, he saw a goat poke his head over the edge. My goodness, friend fox, whatever are you doing down there? Asked the goat in astonishment. The crafty fox called up. Oh, I'm just enjoying this delicious water. So sweet. Aren't you thirsty, friend goat? Why don't you come down? At once, the foolish goat jumped down beside the fox. Ah, wonderful, he said after drinking his fill. But now, how, how do we get out of this well? I know how I'll get out, replied the fox. Nimbly, he leaped onto the goat's back, hopped onto his horns, and scrambled out of the well. Wait, cried the goat. If you had brains in your head instead of a beard on your chin, the fox replied, you never would have jumped in to begin with. Now find your own way out. Crafty fox. Do you know what the moral of that story is? Look before you leap. Always look carefully around yourself, right? Make sure you're in a safe place. If you're a fox and you know it, swish your tail. If you're a fox and you know it and you really Show it if you're a fox and you know it. Swish your tail. Really swish it. Swish it really. Like a big swish, swish, swish. <laughs> if you're a fox and you know it, wiggle your nose. If you're a fox and you know it, wiggle your nose. If you're a fox and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a fox and you know it, wiggle your nose. Oh, okay. Don't scare me now. If you're a fox and you know it, show your claws. If you're a fox and you know it, show your claws. 
If you're a fox in, you know it is. I didn't want to show it. If you're a fox in, you know it. Show your claws. <gasps> you guys are really convincing. Okay, last one. Well, here's how you'll convince me that you're real foxes. If you can sound like a fox. What does the fox say? Just kidding. So, uh, no, I didn't play that song on purpose. Okay. If you're a fox and you know it, say yip, yip, yip. If you're a fox and you know it, say yip, yip, yip. If you're a fox and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're a fox and you know it, say yip, yip, yip. Why didn't you tell me there was a fox behind me? Hi, Tad. Hi, This is the expert I was telling you about in the beginning, that I invited the perfect expert for us to do fox stories. And this is Tad. Tad, were you working? Did you catch anything? Well, we saved you the spot. Do you want to come enjoy the last fox story with us? Okay, come on down. You scared the pants off of me. Almost. I said almost. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.